Cipollone, uh, the White House counsel, went right at Adam Schiff for not uh, responding to a question specifically about the whistleblower. This was good. Watch. I listened to Manager Schiff come up here and say he won't even dignify a legitimate question with, about his staff with a response. I think you deserve an answer to that question. Stop assuming that everybody has horrible motives in the puritanical rage of just everybody's doing something wrong except for you. You cannot be questioned. That's part of the problem here. Mm. You know, every time that, that the questions get close to Adam Schiff and the whistleblower and the coordination and what I would say a legitimate conspiracy, he didn't want to answer it. Pat, uh, you know, he was uh, he was so right to call him out on that. It was an uh, unbelievable moment as we were up close mm. just to see the tension in the room as uh, Pat Cipollone did a great job. No, and, and Pat's like, uh, you're, you're, you're laying waste or attempting to everyone around you, but you can never be questioned. That must be a... That's a nice deal to he, be. Uh... He thinks he's above the law. All right, there was a there was a moment that just happened on the floor where uh, the issue of Joe Biden and what he said in 1999 <laughs> about the ne necessity of having witnesses during an impeachment trial that emerged. Watch. It's in no case did the Senate decline to consider a motion for summary disposition as beyond the Senate's authority or forbidden by the Constitution. The framers did not mean that this political process was to be a partisan process. Instead, they meant it to be political in the higher sense. The process was to be conducted in the way that would best secure the public interest or in their phrase, the general welfare. That was the Biden doctrine of impeachment proceedings. Now, some members in this chamber agreed with that. Some members that serve on the, as managers also agreed with that. But now the rules are different. The rules are different because Manager Schiff just moments ago did what he's now famous for and created a conversation purportedly from the President of the United States regarding Russia hacking of Burisma. And he did, he did the same thing he did when he started his hearings. So this is a common practice. But if we want to look at common practice and common procedures, the Biden rule is one. I'd like to address something else. Because we've heard it time and time again about two judges have decided this issue of executive privilege. I want to address two things very quickly. My very first case at the Supreme Court of the United States, and it was a long time ago, over 30, no, 30, over 30 years ago. 33 years ago. My client lost in the district court. They said, well, we'll appeal to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Went to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, was not so successful. We didn't win there either. My client said, well, what do we do? I said, well, we have one option. We could file a petition for certiorari to the Supreme Court of the United States. Chances are they're not going to take the case. But at this point, it's an important issue to you, so why don't we proceed? My client agreed to proceed. A petition for certiorari was granted, and the court reversed 9 to 0, the Court of Appeals in the District Court. And that's why you continue to utilize courts when appropriate. That's why you do it. And you don't Okay, so on you just heard Jay Sekulow <laughs> on the Biden rule. The polit Politico just got its hands on this memo from 1999 at about 8.30 tonight. Right, right. We got word that Hawley was going to ask a question about this, which is what he was responding to. That is devastating. Well, you, so you've got someone that actually argued it with Chuck Schumer. Uh, so it's interesting, a four-page uh, memo that said you should Not necessary. Yeah, you, you don't need the witnesses. You don't need to, to have it when it comes before the, the, uh, the Senate. And so here we are uh, with a hypocrisy argument, again, from my House uh, Democrat colleagues. The interesting thing is, uh, at, at the end of the day, the facts are on the president's side, and and if the Democrats are honest with the arguments they've consistently made throughout history, they will go ahead and vote for no witnesses and will acquit and get this over with tomorrow. But do you see my point oh. in, the, in the angle <laughs> that this is a tactic? This isn't a this is they they're always guilty of what they 
accused exactly Trump of. Exactly right. You're so in, they say he's illegitimate. No, your your inquiry was right. illegitimate. Right. That's why they're hiding the whistleblower. That's why they're hiding the transcript. Well, period. The, the angle was spot on. You were exactly right with your analysis. And what they've done is they continue to point out over and over again what they are accusing the president of. They're guilty of. We saw that with the Russia investigation. You know the whole conspiracy. Uh, we've got this evidence, uh, and yet the evidence wasn't there. The FISA process was all over. Okay. Abuse of and, power. And, Talk and, about abuse of power. It is an abuse of power, and yet Adam Schiff, the problem is Adam Schiff knew the truth and he lied to the American people over and over and over again. What's the recourse he's there? The he's here. going to run for Senate in California, I understand, when there's a retirement. Well, maybe they have impeachment in California. Oh, <laughs> Congressman, great to see you.